two of my favorite people on the planet are right there with us now. The Agar boys. Gentlemen, how are you? We're doing great, Zane. How are you? Never better. Uh, I see you're still thick as thieves, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know it, Eric. You know it. So You know it. You're always doing these uh, amazing events, but have you ever gotten in trouble together? Uh, not much. My mom, and that's worse. That's about <laughs> as worse as we can get. So I would say, yeah. <laughs> the, worse the, than before. Does, does she refer to you as boys or uh, idiots? Or is it, I mean, <laughs> worse than that sometimes. So, yeah. are, you know, one of these clowns getting me into again. So she's been a trooper going along with all these crazy events. You can't do it without a group supporting oh, you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, especially uh, beside, behind anyone who's preparing for this type of event. I mean, there's, it's like a second job. I mean, and you, you guys, yeah. ha you guys have regular jobs. How do you, and that's that's hours and hours every week to get ready for an Ironman triathlon, but you but you but you did it. Yeah, I like to keep that healthy, and and so um, and so that's the that's the main goal of mine and ours, and and we 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 have a fun time doing it together, and it's not really work when you enjoy what you do. So yeah, it is definitely a commitment though, because I've got a full time job, pretty demanding, and then um trying to work in the training side of things too, 15 or 20 up to 25 hours a week, sometimes maybe longer. So it's, uh, you really got to plan out your time. You got to synchronize everything. You got to, you know, figure out well, I can get to the why, which the why I'm saying in Grand Rapids in West Michigan is fantastic. But, um, you know, when can I get to the why to swim? When can I get in there for a bike class or when can I do my trainer ride? When can, what's the weather like to get outside for yeah. long runs and long bike rides? So yeah, you got to coordinate everything. It becomes a lifestyle. It just it gets ingrained in your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting is there is going to come a point, Jeff, whenever you decide, all right, that's it. When you don't want to do this anymore. And let me, cause I've been through that. And then the, it's like, oh, this is great. Cause you're like, you're, you're eating everything inside. You're like, ah, I mean, it, you're, it, it, but, uh, I, I think I had that point three years ago. I've had enough of it, but, uh, well, you can see the motivation of Johnny to keep us going. And yes, yes, I love it. Well, you know, if you go back to 2013 in Rockford at Mitchell's run, that yeah. was the first time when a lot of people were kind of pulled into what's been happening here with John yeah. finishing that race. Um, was this in the plan or did it just kind of over time the goals keep increasing? Yeah, the goals just keep increasing, right? So especially uh when Johnny's involved. The, um, you know, he just keeps setting sights on the next thing. So you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah. So every time, you know, I just, I just make a habit of myself of setting new goals. You can't, in my, with my stream policy, you know, I have to, I have to be focused and, and determined to conquer a goal, um, no matter how long it takes me. And, and you just keep setting goals for yourself uh, as you accomplish new ones. And so that's a way of life for me. It's not really something that I, I just, um, I just kind of do it out of habit kind of thing. So, yeah, we've been talking, you know, his whole life and Becky, especially my wife, that, uh, you know, trying to look at, you know, continue to do more and, you know, grow, develop and all that kind of stuff. So, Hard to preach that to him, and then when the opportunity comes up that we could do something a little bit more, hard to say no. We we've, we've hit our peak at that point because um, we've been telling him that it'd be kind of disingenuous if we didn't do the same kind of thing ourselves that we're trying to instill in him. So it's uh, it's evolved over the course of time. You know, we we ran our first five after you know we started doing some five Ks here and there, and uh, and that'll be that's what got Johnny interested in walking a mile himself. But we had no interest in doing much longer than five Ks, and then. You know, it's like typical, you know, you've been involved in these run groups and stuff where someone will say, well, you should do this 10K. You go, oh, really? You know, then you do it. And then you're kind of thinking, okay, I'm done at 10K. And then somebody says, hey, you know, the biggest 25K in the country is in Grand Rapids. You should think about doing that. Exactly. And you, know, like an idiot, you go, oh, really? Yeah, may I give it a try? And then you do it. And then you kind of think, all right, I'm done. And then some person in your run group says, well, now you've done a 25K, you should think about doing a marathon. And then all of a sudden it hits you around, like, man, you think I could? And, uh, you know, the right training. So you, it just kind of evolves. I don't think some people probably have a dream of doing an Ironman right away. And um, that was never my dream for sure. I was not an endurance athlete, as you know. And, you know, I played baseball where there's a very little running. You sprint once in a while and that's it. Right. 
So uh, these endurance sports are not something I was interested in at all. But but Johnny loves it. Got us involved in it. Um, it's probably making me a lot healthier. But uh, it, it's uh, kind of taken over our lives, and uh, we love it at this point. I think a lot okay. of people, um, John, excuse me, a lot of people almost take for granted the amount of effort, John, that you put in to finish those races. I think that too often people might say, oh, you know, yeah, well, what, what, what does John actually do? But I've seen you and I've seen what it does to your body. Can you maybe take us through how exhausted you are when you finish these races that your dad takes the first part of? Yeah, you know, I I, I really love doing it because Dad really shows me what I can do if I put enough time in uh, training wise, and and Dad was really never an athlete, right? So I got to see I get to see the building blocks of somebody that wasn't one, but now has turned himself into one, and I think it's really important for me as far as my training goes. Um, when I do something literally every day in order for me to walk a certain distance, um, whether it be my core, or whether you know, it be my stretching that I, I do with my aunt and uncle, so um, weight to the gym, whatever that may be, it, it really gives me an opportunity to see what an athlete goes through and and really get the full athlete experience, you know, as somebody that's not just sitting there. So. Right, yeah, right. It's hard for him to sit up, you know, for long periods of time. Right. So to sit for 17 hours uh, and, you know, work on your, on your core and doing it. And, and then, but at the same time, screaming other participants, yelling and cheering them on and all that. It's draining. And then after 17 hours of sitting there, he's got to get up and walk. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's very difficult for him. Um, and it's definitely a team effort for sure. Um, I imagine that the physicians like John has his own do doctor, a set of doctors. You have your own doctor. I bet your doctors are like, I'm so proud of you. He, he's looking at you and he's like, you have set yourselves up for the, for the, for the best lives. I mean, really, because you're so dang healthy. Yeah. I, you know, I, I really love dad. And so I, I want to keep him around for as long as I can. So, so, but, but for me, I mean, Three balls and, and it really trains my muscles to uh, do certain things that I want them to do. And, and sometimes, you know, if I'm not doing stuff consistently, then my then my body tends to okay. lose what I had before. And so athletics has really helped me out a lot in that respect. Um, yeah, I think Johnny shows everybody that, uh, you know, no matter what your capabilities, I do as well, because having never been an endurance athlete, you know, with the right motivation, you can do so much more than you ever thought possible. I mean, you've been through, you know, uh, long, uh, long distance endurance triathlons and you got to have some reason to do it. Right. Cause it's just hard on your own to get up and do things. But if you have a reason, uh, a cause or a person or whatever to spur you on, then that gets you through the tough workouts. Cause when you feel great, it's no big deal. Right. But it's when you feel crappy, those are the workouts that make or break it. Uh, right, having right. like Donnie and I know you had, uh, done some fundraising for uh, a, a charity that, you know, was what motivated you. And you got to have something like that. But if, if you have it, you latch onto something, but you can do so much more than you ever thought possible. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I noticed that um, the equipment that you guys have is uh, you've really got uh, some fantastic uh, uh, equipment to help you. I know that if you, if you can see what I see, I see John there and, and then, um, the uh, 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 cart, or I, the I don't even want to see stroller. What you push John in? Um, yeah. yeah, the jogger, uh, yes. or uh, kind of like a race chair. The company that makes them calls it, and um, Adap that's really adaptive. Yeah, star. Adap there it is, right there. The adaptive star company out of uh, out Seattle, Washington. Yeah, uh, they make they make the premier joggers, strollers, race chairs, whatever you want to call them. Um, that actually, for some people, they, they can convert into a chariot. You can pull them on the bike. Now we happen to have. Also, just a fantastic bike um, with a company called C Cycle Chinook out of New Hampshire that uh, felt sorry for us with all the weight I'm hauling around. <laughs> and they said, you know, we could we could probably develop a tandem bike that Johnny could sit on behind me and reduce the amount of weight, reduce the number of wheels for rolling resistance, and then um, an aerodynamics dramatically better with this tandem bike. And then uh, the engineer who developed the whole thing 
if you had a genius idea that it, what if you flip Johnny around, he'll be right up against my back, number right. one, but then he can not stare at my rear end for eight hours either. But then he can yes. talk to people as they're coming up on it. So, I mean, it's the greatest bike. He loves it. Yeah, um, and it, this it, thing is, it's a one of a kind. And uh, Zip and SRAM donated all the parts to it. So they did, uh, you know, they did us a huge favor by um, coming through with, uh, with parts. And especially they customized the wheels so that, um, yeah, there it is right there. So those Zip uh, in the product development organization uh, developed those wheels because there's so much weight. But now they can uh, sell into people that are that are larger in size. So it worked out really well. Boy, um, incredible. God rest the soul of Dick Hoyt. Did he ever get to participate with something like this, or was he always pulling like the thing behind him? No. So the, there's that shows you the just how incredible Dick Hoyt was. That guy had you know just the most basic rudimentary equipment sometimes, and uh, what he did with equipment he had. Is just extraordinary and it'll never be duplicated. So we've got some of the best equipment that's available uh, and it's still hard. So it shows you about the kind of machine yeah. that Dick Hoy was. Well, yeah, that is an, that is a tremendous looking machine. My gosh, is that awesome? Just the, the fact that John's weight is so much closer to you. Yeah. 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 Oh, and he doesn't look at me either. So he, he likes it even better. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, man, I love that. And, yeah, uh, it's but, cool. but you're right about Dick, man. God rest his soul. He was just a, beast and it's oh, the, uh, the guy yeah. was smoking cigarettes he was smoking packs of cigarettes before he started to get into this it's incredible yeah but his uh his leg strength to pull rick his son rick through the uh through the events with with nowhere near the equipment we have is just extraordinary yeah and he, he had rick in front of him I'm right like, yep 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 yeah because he couldn't because rick couldn't eat on his own so he had to try to be able to feed him so it, and it's hard to have a kid on the bike on the front of your bike like that is just really difficult. So uh, yeah, it's, it, the respect you have for a guy like uh, Dick Hoyt he'll, will never be duplicated. Um, it's just incredible. Hey, did, have you ever had a chance to meet him? Uh, yeah. Before yeah. he passed? You did, really? I talked to him on the phone, yes. Uh, <gasps> right, before, right before Kona. Yeah, he called us. And, oh, man. And really, really expressed to me that, you know, I would I would be a voice for people with disabilities. And, and when, he, when he said something like that to you, you don't take it very lightly. It's oh so my gosh! Yeah, I mean, just, <laughs> yeah, just it was fantastic. cool to talk talk to him before the the uh, the most surprising thing out of it. He said, and and you know, I I just assumed that they had made it through with no problem. And he said, now the first time we tried to do Kona, we didn't make. It. I'm like, what? <laughs> that that raises much even harder than I thought. And I knew it was was horrible, but uh, yeah, Kona is a difficult race. Um, which we're trying to get invited back to it as our our next goal, but uh. Yeah, Dick. Uh, Dick would did give some great advice for us on. I yes, you, uh, the lava the uh, the lava fields are another planet, mm. and uh, yeah. it's it's yeah. it's the hardest thing that a human can do. What you're pulling off there, it's uh, right. yeah, pretty brutal. And we we got without knowing, we didn't know what we didn't know at that point. Um, you know, we were so naive and uh, new to the whole thing, but it was a great opportunity. And like we told John, you know, take take opportunities as they come and and see what you can make out of it. Uh, okay. so it ended up a lot of great things came out of it, but we got halfway through the bike and had to stop. So we made it pretty far, but, um, it would have been nice to get all the way through it. Um, this was your fifth attempt at completing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so while we've, we've competed five other times, this is our sixth shot at it that we just finished in Maryland. Okay. So, um, yeah. of Ironman distance races, yeah. that yeah. is real perseverance, man, because the amount of preparation to each one of those is, is, an incredible uh, buildup, and then oh boy, we we didn't do it. We didn't do it. Yeah. We didn't do it. That's uh, that's really a lot of stick to itiveness. Uh, oh, that's... thanks. Yeah, we've had some crazy right. things happen along the way. You know, we had uh, well, I mean, Kona was like the, the toughest one to t take on first, but then uh, we had um, a bike crash. Someone slammed into us in a race in Texas, and then um, then another year in Texas it was over a hundred degrees, uh, and so like the fallout rate was thirty five percent or some crazy number. Uh -huh. um, another time I was pulling Johnny. I didn't realize his, his chariot, we had a flat tire for 40 miles. I just thought the wind had picked up and it was getting more difficult. So we had some, some strange things happen. Um, driving rain for six hours during a bike in another event. So it's one of those things where, you know, you just felt like we were ready, but, um, it, things didn't fall into place. So we just started to try to remain positive and take Johnny's approach that never give up and keep trying. As you approach the end of Ironman, Maryland, you're like, that you had to kind of, was it almost like nervousness? Oh my gosh, we're actually going to do it. 
John. Uh, and John, were you thinking the same thing? Yeah, it was kind of weird though because the, I was all excited and dance and I couldn't move because the jury would get off balance and, and throw him off, and I didn't want to do that. So I had to measure my excitement, which is something that I've never, I've never had the opportunity to do in an Iron Man. So it, it was a new experience for me, and so. When I crossed that line, man, I just went berserk. I, I just, wow. <laughs> how much early, How much prior to the cutoff did you guys make it in? So we made it on the bike cutoff by 20 minutes, so then that gave us more time to run. And so I felt I felt okay about the run, but when you get off the bike after 112 miles in about nine hours and then having to run a marathon, my legs were just – my hamstrings were aching already after mile one, and I thought, man, I'm not – you know, if I step the wrong way, I'm going to pull my hamstring. And so that's what I was telling Johnny, you got to really remain calm because we got to stay as straight and narrow as we can. And, you yeah. know, cause you're running on brick roads and running on grass and dirt and some other areas. And I thought one step, you know, one thing, not paying attention, I'm going to pull something and, and uh, blow this thing. So we are really, really careful. Um, but the late in the last stretch, you're running on a dirt, I mean, a brick road. I thought, man, if I step in a hole the wrong way, and right. the night, I'm going to have to crawl to the finish line and see if I can do it. But yeah, so we were really, really paying it close attention at the time. My gosh. And we finished with four minutes, four minutes to spare. Four minutes to spare. Holy moly. I didn't realize it was that close. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So I had to really yeah. pay close attention to my, what miles per hour I was running and, um, or minutes per mile that I was running and, uh, really making sure we stayed on top of every single thing Ra- down to the minute. Razor thin. Yeah. So if you're running nine to 10 a mile and you see you've got, well, we've got 13, 14 minutes left. We're going to make it, but I can't, nothing can slow us down. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah, you really, you didn't want to get too excited at that point. I was kind of delirious anyway. So fortunately, you know, I have a, a Garmin watch where I get, I just programmed in, you know, running and walking a certain amount of time and at a certain pace. And I, then I would knew I would make the overall. So it was just every four minutes, you know, just keep on running and then walk for a minute uh, or walk to an aid station or whatever, and then immediately get right back to running so you don't slow down too much. And it was just uh, nonstop for six and a half hours of just um, trying to stay right on a, a cadence and a pace. And yeah. that was my that was my favorite part of the race, too, because it really symbolized, you know, what I go through. And then if you just keep taking one one step at a time, keep moving forward, you'll eventually get there. It may not be in the time you are, but you will eventually get there, you know, if you keep moving forward. Well, yeah. And, uh, and that's, that's a tremendous way to look at it. It's kind of been your, uh, uh, ammo from the very, from the very beginning, John, you, you haven't really changed your thought process at all about any of these mm-hmm. things. And that's, that's kind of what you speak about when you speak publicly or you write a book or whatever it is. Right. Sure. Sure. Yeah. It's, then uh, what my parents have always ingrained in me and, and what I try to s- surround myself with when I'm around other people. So, And, and triathlon community is a great example of that. And, and that's why, you know, it's really not about the medal for me. It's about, you know, um, finding different lessons in every experience you have. And so... Um, whether I finish or not, uh, it's a great experience. And I love doing it. So, and, th- and that's, you know, where it all comes together. Um, this, these whole adventures that you two do your family, uh, this is all part of a bigger picture. You have a tremendous support group with, uh, uh Becky, of course, and then Annie and grace mm-hmm. and, and then your extended family, the nieces and nephews, the grandmas, the grandpas, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, it's you, John are the bonding force for all these people. And, <laughs> and, and it, it's terrific. It's, it's one of the, you, you your family and all, all that uh, you touch are just absolutely fantastic. Well, yeah. uh, thank you very much. But I, I wouldn't, I wanted to thank everyone. And that's one of the reasons why I wrote, I wrote the book with my mom was to really tell people, you know, who these people are behind me that encourage me to do all these things and, and really are positive forces in my life. Um, it's called The Impossible Mile, uh, The Power in Living Life, one step at a time you see on the screen there. Um, but it's, it's about, you know, 
all the challenges that I went through, all the challenges that my parents went through in order for me to achieve um, what I want to do. But, you know, everyone has their own impossible mile that they have to conquer in their life. It may not be walking or it may not be running or racing, uh, but, you know, everyone has their own challenges mm-hmm. that they can face, and it, it's about... Um, learning how to conquer those uh challenges yeah and then and then the failures along the way that um <clears throat> can become successful failures so i can i can tell you you know just in you know, in a summary level of the had we made it in hawaii to that first race we wouldn't be doing any of the things we're doing today we would have probably scaled it back back then but there would have been johnny never would have developed a relationship with michael phelps or with under armor Never would have been in a commercial with Michael Phelps. Never been in a commercial with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So all those things were offshoots. It was not making it in Hawaii that first time. Continuing to work hard and then to try to develop relationships and reaching out to Michael Phelps when he was his, his, his video that Under Armour put together leading up to the Olympics. Uh, John used to watch all the time, was really motivated by it. And rather than to send him a thank you letter, Becky created a, a the video of Johnny doing the exact same things Michael was doing and made a side-by-side video of Michael's workout cu- a couple at the same time with Johnny's workout. And Michael saw it. And since that time, he's been a huge supporter of Johnny's. They, they communicate on social media a lot. Um, he, uh, he's just a huge supporter, endorsed Johnny's book, the lead endorser on it. And so just amazing things have happened when, you know, I told my wife originally that nothing good was going to come of it. And of course I was uh, proven horribly wrong. That, uh, yeah. But great things have come out of, what we now call a successful failure. Uh, and plus, uh, you know, and in fact, what I, if I could, can I, can I take a look at, um, uh, let's see, there's, this is a commercial that I, I, I love the Phelps one because it's, uh, like you said, Johnny side by side. And I, I want to mm-hmm. get to that one too, but sure. I also want to share this one with the audience and then we can all watch it together. It's, sure. it's the rock and our pal, John. So how do you make it? You-, you can see and hear that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How do you overcome the odds? There's Natasha's way. Be shy, focus on yourself, till they focus on you. Or Juana's way. Look at that kid. Why be one That's champ? Oh. When I want to be two. Be like you, Sra. Let nothing refugee pulls both safety. destroy your dreams. Screw fate. Or maybe you oh. beat doubt one step at a time, yes. like Johnny. Who is that? That's awesome. Yeah. What about Zoe? All right, enough about Zoe. I want to see more John. A pre That's spectacular. It was really man. Uh, my wife Becky put that all together. She's really, really talented, and uh, it took a lot of effort to get all those shots, synchronize them up, and then. But it was it was cool, and Michael Phelps loved it. He he saw it online, uh, gave us a call actually, and and uh, talked to us right before a race in uh, Haines City, Florida, a half Iron Man, and gave us some motivation to get through it. So pretty wild. The amazing thing as you look at that video, and I'll I'll brag about Johnny just for a second that. Um, we are when it was being filmed we said well what are we going to do with johnny like walking down the track because michael phelps's dad isn't in the pool with him right and i was having to walk with him and so johnny said well give me a push 
And that's the first time he ever walked without somebody holding on to him. And he walked a hundred yards. So you oh can see God. there, you get the right motivation. It, you never know what you can do. Cause he had never walked unassisted before until that time. And he was motivated enough yeah. to replicate exactly what Michael Phelps had done. So uh, pretty, pretty incredible. That is, that is incredible. I didn't realize that. I didn't know that someone was, that there was always a hand on John or, you know, and that yeah. type of guy, but not in that case. That That's tremendous. Yeah. He was able to muster up what it took to do it. And uh, I don't know how, but I did. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool experience for sure. Now, some people may remember, and I'll, I'll, I'll finish this up. Um, not that long ago, did you ever catch up with the screwball contractor? Oh, yes. Well, we did not, but we had a, a separate contractor who did, and uh, he took care of it all. So, okay. So, yeah, that, he took care of the those old contractor. He uh, worked his magic behind the scenes and uh, uh, yeah, extracted the work out of the guy. Yeah, so, for those who uh, for those who didn't know, they were uh, the agars were renovating the uh, uh, downstairs area, so that would be John's apartment, correct? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, it was one of those. Yeah, uh, I'll get the work done for you, and then you never heard the guy again. Yeah, excuse <laughs> it, excuse like you wouldn't believe, but it, it shows you the, uh, the the new contractor came in. Brought a ton of his friends in. They got stuff done a couple of weeks before Christmas for Johnny. That I mean, he talked about nearly impossible. It was amazing, and yeah. um, I think they've so, finally been recognized. But Bespoke Homes is the phenomenal, yep. phenomenal contractor. Anybody needs work done, Bespoke Homes is uh, a great place to work with. Yeah, we. I uh, I'm gonna have a couple of parties down here. Uh, so many uh, Iron Man finish. Uh, yes, yes. Let me know I, if, you, yeah. if you still like me. I want to be there. Oh, yeah, you're, yeah. A, you're our favorite radio personality. For Thank sure. you. Hey, what does Grace do? Grace never gets mentioned because, I mean, Johnny's over here doing Iron Man. Becky, I'm sorry, Becky writes books with John, and, and yeah. Annie is, uh, is, is freaking well. She's all over the place. She's doing everything in social media and doing sports broadcasting. Yeah. What about Grace? What, what is going on in Grace's life? Well, Grace, it's her birthday today. Oh, and, it is. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to have um, um uh, Cinco de Mayo fiesta today. So. <laughs> but but she's doing well. She's turned twenty, the big two zero. And um, yeah, she's looking she's, at moving. Uh, trying to be uh she's uh, loves kids and is great with them. And she's gonna work on being a nanny. And uh, so she's she's got things cooking in life, which is good. And um, so everybody is super busy and going hundred miles hundred miles an hour in different directions. But uh, but it's been great. We love it. The first family of love, the Agars. I love you guys. Okay, well, thank you, Becky. We are that. Love you. So, yeah. You're, love you're spect you. yes. You're spectacular. You're spectacular. I, uh, I can't wait to see you again, and I thank you for taking the time to join me. Okay. Oh, oh thank you very much. Give uh, tell everybody I said hi. All right. We'll, well do. Thanks, we'll Eric. Do. Till next time. See ya. Sounds good. Take care.